So we've been talking throughout the show today about all the people who are living in Israel who are now missing after the attack over the weekend from Hamas. Um, one is a Canadian peace activist named Vivian Silver, 74 years old, had been a leader in the Alliance for Middle East Peace for 20 years. Silver feared to have been kidnapped after she told her sister that Hamas terrorists were at her door on Saturday morning. Nobody's heard from her since. We're joined now by John Linden, who's an executive director of the Alliance for Middle East Peace, Vivian's friend. But, you know, tell us about Vivian a little bit first before we talk about these circumstances, if you can, John. Um, Vivian is uh, a one in a million type of person. Anybody who, um, who has met Vivian uh, will probably attest to that. She's dedicated her entire life to Israeli-Palestinian peace building, uh, a variety of organizations, initiatives that she was very often a catalyst for uh, helping to guide their evolution and development. But she wore that leadership very lightly and humbly. She was often the smartest person, and she is often the smartest person in every room that she's in, but she doesn't need to make other people aware of that. She has a humor and a sense of warmth and empathy that I think everybody who knows her can recognize immediately. And we care about her very much. I'm sure you do. And I'm sure that um, as someone who's dedicated his own life to try to bring peace to that region, just as she has, that the cruelest of ironies wouldn't be lost on you. So you here you all are working for peace. And here she is um, presumed to have been kidnapped by those who are working against it. I mean, it just it's um, it's hard to describe, I'm sure. It is. I mean, something that maybe some of your viewers may not be aware of is some of the very bravest peace builders you will find live right on the Gaza border. Um, you know, nobody in Israel or in the West Bank or Gaza is completely um, safe from the violence and the ongoing conflict. But those that live right in that area, whether it's in Gaza or in the Gaza envelope inside Israel, you know, hardly a month, never mind a year, will go by without a significant security incident, having to run to um, uh, to a shelter or a red alert. And uh, Vivian chose to live there. She chose to live in a place where the conflict was being confronted every day and made it her, she makes it her life's work to um, to address that. Um, and I think, you know, her leadership really in Women Wage Peace, which is the largest peace building uh, movement now inside Israel of, of almost 50,000 women, Vivian helped to co-found that in 2014, right after the terrible uh, Israel-Gaza war that took place in that summer, and which affected her and her family so acutely living at the Gaza border. And that really informs the way that she, she thinks about this and that she's not alone. There are many victims of, of the terrible, terrible violence we've seen over recent days who come from the community who work most uh, mo mo most often for peace. Now, that conflict that you're describing that you all are so familiar with is, um, is different this time. This is something we've been talking about, how this is a completely different situation in terms of that has been escalated. Hold on a second, John. Let me bring up what's happening in Gaza City right now. We can bring this up full. I think there's explosions that have been heard in the background were just right as we were speaking there were two explosions heard in the background and this has been going on throughout the night because this, the Gaza Strip now is under heavy bombardment from the Israeli Defense Forces and, and John we'll keep this up and listen to it as we continue our our conversation because I was going to ask you about this anyway the there you go there it is again. You can clearly hear that. And that, um, as night has fallen in Gaza, has been the the case now for a number of hours. So we could hear it there in the background. I was going to ask you about your own organization now and what you're doing to try to help. And there it is again. You can hear it in the back as we speak. With all of this going on now, I mean, we don't know where people like Vivian have been have been taken. They could be where those bombs are falling, uh, right? I'm sure you've thought about that. What, what's being done by your organization? I mean, we're working, first of all, we have over 160 members who are doing almost every activity you can imagine to bring Israelis and Palestinians together and to really combat the sort of dehumanization that you're you're seeing this weekend. And if you look at social media, you see emanating outside of the, of the region. And we're helping them in whatever way we can. I mean, you know, Vivian's issue is obviously perhaps front of mind. We've also had the son of a chairman of a member organization who was, who, who was killed on Saturday as well. We have people who are suffering very significant right. trauma. And what they've seen and went. It's, uh, boy, we wish nothing but the best for you and, and obviously for Vivian. We thank you for coming on, John. Um, let's go back to live to Gaza and continue to watch and listen to uh, the night there. And we'll be back with more coverage in just a moment.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.